guys, Walt Wagner here with TAV. We're sending another one home this weekend and uh, wanted to kind of go over it. It's a pretty clean build, I'm really, really proud of it. Um, kind of go from front to back here. This is one of our stage two setups for a, uh, a bed mounted canopy and drawer system that we'll show you here in a second. But uh, moving from front to back, we're looking at a third gen Tundra. But for uh, front bumper, we're gonna start with the body armor here, front bumper and winch. As uh, many of you have seen before, we like to run the ADD Stealth Fighter series bumpers on these. I really like the lines of them. Um, I think they complement the lines of the truck really well, and it's, a, it's very functional lines. A lot of approach angle on this. What we like to do though, is keep the winch very accessible. And you can look in here very easily and see the drum of the winch. This is the come up 12.5 RS, wireless remote compatible and a corded remote. So it's a 12 and a half thousand pound winch, which is physically the same size as the 9.5 winch, but uh, uh, in a 12 and a half uh, configuration. For lights, you can see we're running the Baja Designs LP9, both in driving combo amber and white. Uh, probably my favorite light that we're using right now because of its, its capabilities and beam patterns and light output, both in amber and white. And you have a high power and a low power on that switch. So you can run the, just the bottom three diodes on the light uh, when, you, when you're in low power as well as the side lights. And it's got a cool uh, amber backlight as well, which is, which is actually very easily, easily uh, identifiable when you're driving. The white lights have an amber backlight as well. So they all kind of match when your running lights are on. Um, the, what we do, since this bumper isn't intended to run lights on top of it, it's intended to have a light bar put inside it, inside the cutout. We leave that open, uh, obviously, so you can see the winch, but we supported the underside of the top of the bumper with the weight of the lights. It, it won't allow the top of the bumper to flex or vibrate. So it's a very solid mount uh, in there. On the corners, uh, it's just a little touch that we do. Um, some people will run the Stealth Fighter uh, cover that goes on here and you can see through it so they design it so you can mount a light inside that and if you're not going to run a light inside that some of our clients like to opt for a plate that we make and it's just a solid plate that kind of closes that off kind of cleans cleans the look up a little bit if you're not going to be running a light inside there all right in the engine compartment we're running a dual battery setup but we do a little bit different for this one so we're running a an interstate battery we found really good results with these having a continuing to use a lead acid battery as the starting battery um, but what we've done here is we've got our our the breaker panel here or our breaker for our red arc that's actually in the bed and that links our lead acid battery to a group 34 battery and that allowed that the red arc allowed the dc to dc charger allows two different styles of battery to be charged Right behind that, on top of our fuse box, is an S-Pod. This is the Bantam, but we're running the, S, the HD panel on the inside of the truck with the rubberized switches. And we've got everything labeled here, so you can kind of see what, what, where everything is on, that's the same on the switch panel. All of our wire loom is, we build all of our uh, wiring harnesses ourselves. Everything's labeled for exactly what it is with heat shrink, and it's run along the firewall, grouped together, with Velcro, um, so zip ties don't break, and runs over to the break to the uh, fuse box, the other fuse box that we put in, that also goes back to the everything's labeled and everything runs out back to the bed to where the secondary battery is. Up forward, we have the ARB compressor to specifically run the lockers, and that's it. Moving back just a little bit. We're running McNeil racing uh, fenders and bedsides on these trucks because this is a stage two, so it's two and a half inches wider per side in your suspension. So it puts a large tire out further out away from the fenders. Even if you have a factory fender flare, it sticks it out pretty far. So these, these uh, McNeil racing fenders covers up the tire nicely and, and we can keep the truck fairly low in the preload on the suspension and still fit a 37 inch tire in there really nicely without contacting anything. 
Uh, as you've seen before too, when we do these, we hand make our inner fender liners. We hand mold these on the truck as it's here. And then we line X up and around the, the bottom edge of the fiberglass. So to prevent any kind of rock chips or anything from chipping up the fiberglass or the paint right on this surface here. So it's all protected from underneath and it makes it real easy to spray it out and clean it out. All right, for suspension on this one, with this being a stage two, we're running Total Chaos's long travel upper and lower control arms. It's the race series upper and lower control arms that are two and a half inches longer than the factory control arms. And that allows us to keep a very low overall height on the truck and get a lot, a lot more suspension travel out of it without having to preload our coilover as much. We've got the Total Chaos spindle gussets welded to the spindles the tie rod extension and chromoly uh, axle shafts from Total Chaos. So all of that is extended out two and a half inches wider. We're running a custom King coilover. On this particular truck, we're running a 700 pound coil spring up front with high speed compression adjuster and appropriate valving for how this truck's gonna be driven. The RCI skid plates are what we're running on this, aluminum skid plates. We're very strong and incredibly light. I've, I've run those across rocks a few times in Moab and it's, uh, they're, they're definitely worth it to protect any of your drive drivetrain components under there. <clears throat> Wheels and tires on this are our beloved method 704 series trail, trail series wheel. It's, we're running these because we really like the bead grip technology that method incorporates on the inner and, inner and outer bead on these wheels and the tire itself is a 37 1250 17 Toyo MT and uh, just always been such a huge fan of this tire. It wears really, really well and incredible traction, both aired up and aired down. I've had them work really well in the snow, uh, slushy snow, mud, rock, slick rock, everything is just works really well and it's a pleasure to drive on the pavement as, as well. To protect the rocker panel on this truck, we're running the RCI flat sliders so they're, they don't have a, a, a bevel to them or like an angle to them. This particular set is flat, so it makes a very nice step to stand on. If you want to access anything on the roof rack or do anything up high, you can stand up on that as well as, you know, use it as a, a jack point, you know, if you needed to lift the side of the truck up or anything like that. It's, a, it's, it's designed to support the weight of the truck. And protect your doors and rocker panels. For rear suspension on our Tundra Stage One through Three, so if you get a Stage One, Stage Two, or Stage Three, all the suspension components are the same. The they all work so well together. We just made that a standard across the board. So we're running a custom uh, Alcan leaf spring pack set up specifically for the tire size we're running and the load that's gonna be in this truck. Um, this truck will have a rooftop tent on it at times. It'll have a trailer behind it at times, as well as the load that's already in the bed that lives there all the time, like the drawer system and the, the canopy and awning and everything else. It's balanced very well. It's a, it's a uh, custom 12 inch travel King remote reservoir shock with high speed compression adjustment. Um, U-bolt flip kit and a bump stop from Archive Garage. The shock relocation kit is from Total Chaos. I really like the upper and lower shock mounts for this. It's extremely stout. And we relocate, so we cut the stock shock mount off of the axle and we rotate the Total Chaos shock mount up and kind of out of the way of, of obstacles on the ground but it, it's also there to allow the shock to extend and compress, utilizing all of its travel in the most efficient way possible uh, with the overall you know, height of the truck when it's sitting under its load. It's, uh, you've got plenty of compression and extension travel in the middle as it sits. For drivetrain on this, this truck is re-geared. We're running nitro gears. Uh, 529 gear ratio with ARB lockers front and rear. All right, so the, for the rear bumper, we've been running, working with Expedition One for a long time now, and I really love the cleanliness of their of their bumpers. 
Uh, the nice thing about these is the swing outs. It cut, you can get it with dual swing outs. And the swing outs are identical, so you can set them up any configuration you want to. Um, if you needed to run dual spares or something like that, you could do that, or you could run any configuration you want to on the passenger, on the driver's side. Um, as you can see here, we're running the 37 inch full size spare and it's not impeding the brake light, either the third brake light on the canopy or the side brake lights. Um, uh, for lighting in the back, we're running the squadron sport in like a wide, a wide cornering beam pattern back here. So it makes a really good amount of light in the back. If you're, if you're, you know, when you've got a camp canopy on this thing and you want to be able to use your mirrors at night, you can light up everything behind you really well in a tight spot and actually use your mirrors. So when opening and closing the swing outs on an Expedition 1 rear bumper, when you go to open their way, the way their latch is designed, you can just use your fingertips in behind here and there's a little latch underneath. So as you're coming up, you can open it that way. And you don't really have to muscle these around too much. It, a, a good rule of thumb is to spray some dry lube or something up in the spring in the mechanism to keep dust and everything from building up too much. But if you use an open hand, just use your fingers under here. Do not put your thumb in here for leverage. You'll do that once, I promise. So, because as you open it up and you crush your thumb in here, it's no fun. So if you just use your hand and open like this, it'll just fall open. Babysit the thing open and let your pin drop into place. So especially with the weight of your tire on here, you can bring it open and watch where your pin rides on this, on this plate and it's gonna drop down into a hole right there. If you let this thing swing open and, and slam into place, you could damage your pin or something could happen there. And if that were to break or something because it kind of flew open, you, your tire can swing around and hit the side of your truck. All right, on, in the back of the truck here, we're running an RLD Designs stainless canopy. This thing is super sweet, nice and strong. The, the dynamic load rating on the top of this thing is about 700 pounds, which is more than you really want to put up there anyway, but it, it'll, it's incredibly strong. We're also running a decked drawer system in here. Um, these deck systems are super sweet. I mean, they're, they're, they're loaded, they're rated at about 2,000 pounds on top of the deck. Um, but the drawers, I mean, they're easy to take out. They're, you know, you can kind of just lift them up and pull the entire drawer out and set it on the ground if you needed to. These boxes are uh, D boxes by deck that you can, that, that are designed to fit down inside, down inside the drawer, separators and things like that for them. <coughs> dividers for inside the drawer. There's all kinds of, uh, th this is a pretty cool little box here too. Just kind of something you could take out if you had straps or something like that. Um, you just kind of, everything's pretty modular with these. It's just sweet. Rolls on nice big wheels. It has a, a good solid lock down. You can get locks for these. It goes right here and you can lock your drawers closed. This one has uh, an Audi cab, uh, fridge slide. So the cool thing about this fridge slide is it comes out, your fridge would normally be up here pretty high, but these tilt down to about a 40, not quite a 45, maybe a 40 degree angle. And you can reach into your fridge this way, instead of trying to stand on something and reach down inside it. And then you can also take this off fairly easily too, just take the tray out. The customer's got his own fridge that he's gonna be supplying for that. We've got an air hose here for quick connect for airing up your tires and stuff from the other side. You just plug right into that. The There's some uh, slack built in right here. Uh, the line goes down under the bed to a volume tank, two and a half gallon volume tank that we use just to store some air. If you needed a quick blast, and, you know, blast some dust off a of gear, whatever you need, you can do a little air gun or something with it and have working air in your volume tank. The battery, the secondary battery and the, the Red Arc DC to DC charger is all cleanly mounted inside that front runner box and it is accessible. So you can pull the lid off of it. You know, you can access it if you needed to right through the top of the rack that the other wolf packs are on. And this rack is designed to hold three or four wolf packs at a time. 
and we've got a front runner water tank mounted in a custom mount. So we made the mount underneath there for the water tank to fit in without sliding around. It's we're using stratchets, front runner stratchets. You can fill your tank up from the driver's side, just pull your lid off, the cap off, and just fill it with a hose. And your water comes out of this hose plumbed down, plumbed down here. You can pull the hose out this way and use it out outside the truck. And just shove it all back in and out of the way. We've got a Blue Sea power bank right here as well that's wired up to the auxiliary battery. So you can see what your voltage is for your battery. And you've got USBs, four USBs, and a 12 volt here. And you can turn this on right here. You can see it turn on. So that battery's at 13.09 volts. And you just shut it off when you're not using it so you don't drain your battery and it's good usable power once you're back here. So when the fridge is plugged in, you can turn that on, leave it on if you want. The fridge stays plugged in and charging. And when you're not gonna be running the fridge, you can just shut it off. So for the roof racks, we're running front runners, slimline two low profile racks. And as you can see, it's a really good platform to mount, say an Alucab 270 awning. Really like these awnings. These things are, we use these all the time at events and out on the beach and places like that where it's super quick shade, or if you want to get out of snow or rain, you can set it up super fast. It's easy to take down. It's freestanding. So if you're at camp, you can actually move the truck around and not have to close your awning up or anything. So if you had a tent on top, you've got your awning out and you want to just adjust with the sun or something like that, you can just move the truck. You can just get in it, turn around, do whatever you need to do. And it, uh, you can get a wall kit for this. So you can have this third post come down to the ground and you can stake that in. So if there is a little bit of wind, you can stake that third post to the ground. But if you've got a wall kit for it, it's they send it with other posts that you can rivet onto these stanchions and those go to the ground but it gives you a corner for your walls to to mount to and it gives you a gigantic room outside outside the truck so we've been we've been using these things for since they've been coming into the u.s and i've been very very happy with these probably about seven years now um like it, so you can be under here if you had cooking gear or something like that in the side of the truck. You can be in the rain, whatever, and be able to access the side of the truck underneath the awning. The, uh, the roof rack itself, we're running uh, S2 Pros in a kind of like a, a work scene or like more of a wide, wide light uh, beam pattern. We've got four of these, one on each corner and you can move them. So even though this one looks like it's in behind the awning, you can run it down here and it will light up the ground everywhere around you down here. So we've got two on each side. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, the S-Pod is the HD unit, which is a rubberized switch. So you don't have to take your eyes off the road to know which switch you want to engage. So this is the left side roof rack, right side roof rack, ARB compressor, which you can leave on when you're on the trail rear locker front locker so if you've got those memorized you can just operate them that way and then you know the far right is your rear lights for backing up so you never even really have to look at this you can just reach down and feel which switch is which and the the we boost system that we're using in this the internal antenna is mounted right here so it's out of the way and it's centralized in the truck and we'll show you the antenna on the outside here in a second these are the switches for the LP9s up, up front. So you've got low power and then high power. So, and off is in the middle. And this is nice to have while you're driving because your arm can rest right on the armrest and you can have your hand right next to the switches as you're using them. So you're not blinding anybody. In almost every one of the trucks that we build, the client will opts for a Revelco. This Revelco fob will Dis we, we can immobilize this truck by pulling this out. This interrupts the signal to where the truck still has power, but you can't start it. It will not start so you can drive it away. 
and it is unique to every single truck that we put in here. So you get two of these Revelco fobs per, you know, per installation. We try to line it up and there it's, it's key weighed, so it can only go on one way, but we tend to line it up to where the tab or the Revelco is right side up and you can just push it in. Now you can start the truck. So the WeBoost system we're using is, is mounted underneath the seat in the, in the passenger side rear seat. So it's kind of out of the way. You don't have to worry about, about hitting it with anything. You know, it's, it's hard mounted there. And then the antenna, all the wiring is concealed and run back and the antenna is on a ram mount. So if you're just driving around, general driving around, you can keep it in the down position. We've got some uh, Velcro straps kind of holding it tight against the, the roof rack. But when you're underway, you're driving, you can turn that up, you know, when you will require a signal and you can get a much better signal with that thing up and out and, and broadcasting, uh, correction, receiving a signal. So this is also a good location because you want this, this antenna as far away from your internal antenna as possible. And there's different ways you can test your signal strength with that too.